All right, guys. So again, today we're going to be covering properly setting stop losses and take profits. This is one of the most critical aspects of trading, any kind of trading. But we specifically are going over the forex markets here, foreign exchange, foreign currency trading, um, and essentially stop losses are basically your mercy point in the markets when you enter a trade. It's not like um, I'm going to use a gambling analogy here. It's not like you're playing uh, blackjack or roulette or uh, poker or any of those games. It's not like when you put your money into the bet, into the gamble, after the wheel spins and the number, the ball lands on a number that rounds over, whatever you risked is either gone or you get it back and it's over with. When you place a trade, your money is live in the markets and it doesn't stop for you. That is one of the reasons trading is as psychologically difficult as it is. When you enter a trade, there is nobody and nothing that is going to stop the trade until either everything's gone in your account or you get in there and manually stop the trade yourself. So what a stop loss does is when you enter a trade, a stop loss is a protective stop or a mercy point where when your analysis is wrong and your trading idea is invalidated or wrong, it is a point that you get kicked out of the trade, it stops you out of the trade, your money gets taken out of the markets, and you minimize your loss that you occur on the trade. So as we know in trading, not every trade is going to be a winner. When you have a losing trade, you need to have a protective stop loss in place for every trade, every single trade. There's a very small percentage of traders who are scalpers that are on the tick charts or the smaller time frames, and they're in and out of trades with the clicks of buttons very fast. That is a time where I can understand not needing to place a stop loss for every trade you make. Other than that, there's never a trade or a time or a strategy that you do not put a stop loss in. Anything can happen. If you're not sitting at the chart staring at it the whole time, there can be, uh, North Korea can fire a nuclear missile. And if you're in a yen trade, a dollar trade, Swiss franc trade, euro trade, pound trade, really any of them, it could go nuts. If you don't have a protective stop there to protect you from something happening to that, you could blow every dime you have in your account, right? Um, so unless you're sitting there watching every second of the chart on a smaller time frame or anything, you should have a stop loss every single time you replace a trade. Not only should you have one with every trade you replace, but you should have it predetermined before you ever enter a trade. Huge, huge that you don't enter a trade and then place it. Another huge aspect with it is once you enter a trade, you cannot change your stop loss. Unless you have a specific strict plan in place, when price hits X level, I adjust my stop loss to Y, right? That is the only time you should ever be adjusting your stop loss. Because when you get into a trade and your stop loss was predetermined, and then you adjust it, not based off of a strategy you're following or any predetermined thing, now you're acting on pure emotions. You've got fear making you think price is turning against you and you're going to lose the profits you're up on. You've got greed making you think price is going against you. You're losing all your money, but it's going to eventually turn around and go in your direction. Um, all your emotions come out to play when the trade is executed and you're live. Before you make the trade and you don't have money on the line, your emotions and your thought process is clear. That is when you determine where to place your stops and, and targets, right? So your stop loss must be predetermined. It must be um, not touched. It must not be touched unless you have a very strict set of rules. Maybe you adjust to break even once you hit a certain target. Maybe once you uh, take profit gets hit, you move your stop loss to a certain area. Whatever your exact strategy is, you cannot just trade as you go and change your stop loss as you feel. Because I promise you, I promise you, I've done it. That's the only reason I know. If you just leave your stop loss and you're allowing yourself to adjust it in open trades, you're going to get hurt. You're going to lose money. You're going to blow accounts. You're going to um, suffer. Really, you're going to suffer. So you need to start setting a stop loss, predetermining it, and not touching it. Let it ride, right? Unless, again, you have a strict strategy. Now, aside from that, um, your stop loss needs to be at the right point. Now, there are a lot of things that can dictate where your stop loss needs to be. I'll throw some out here um, for you guys. So one one aspect of what stop loss should be is your trading time frame, right? So this is something I go over in my course, guys. You know, 
the trading time frame, there's three different time frames that we mainly analyze here at CoreFX to make a trade. And the main time frame is our trading time frame. That's where we're going to be executing our trades. That's where we're going to be managing our trades. That's where our stop loss and target and entry is all going to be placed. Um, we've got what we call the set, the stop entry and target. That's where we determine that on our trading time frame. So our trading time frame is going to be a huge factor on where we set our stop loss and how we set our stop loss. Our trading style is going to be another huge determining factor of where we set our stop loss. Are you a pullback trader? Are you a breakout trader? Are you a reversal trader? Are you a divergence with uh, Fibonacci resistance or whatever trader? Um, are you a scalper? Are you a position trader? Are you a swing trader? How long you hold your trades for should be determined on how long your stop loss is. If your average trade length is uh, a couple days, you don't want a stop loss that's 10 pips away from where price is trading because the normal intraday volatility is going to take that out. You need to have as many different factors on your side with every aspect of trading and stop loss is a huge one of them. Um, your pair you're trading is going to determine it, right? So if I'm trading the pound yen versus the euro dollar, I need to have totally different pip size stop losses. They're going to be totally different moving pairs and they're going to need totally different size stops. If I have a 10 pip stop on euro dollar, that doesn't mean if I'm trading a similar setup on the euro pound, I need a 10 pip stop loss. It's most likely going to be a 60 pip stop loss as opposed to the euros, the euro dollar. So um, every pair you trade is going to have different stop losses. This is where our average true range comes in. Core FX traders know that, right? This is where when we switch pair to pair, we use the average true range to help set our stop loss because each pair moves differently. And that average true range helps us identify how many pips the pair we're looking to trade moves on average, right? Um, another thing that is uh, like something you need to factor in with setting a stop loss is your technical analysis, right? So are you using your market structure, trend lines, Fibonacci's, moving averages, chart patterns, candlestick patterns? What are you using to set your stop loss? And that's another thing that is going to have a factor in it. If you're trading support and resistance as your main trigger and uh, you have four other things going on, but that's your main point of entry, your stop loss needs to be based off of how far that support or resistance zone is from entry and where that support and resistance zone ends. So what these all come down to that makes the most important aspect of what we do with our stops is going to be the concept behind setting a stop loss is this. Set your stop loss where your analysis is wrong, right? So what does this mean? If I'm trading a pair and I'm trading it long, my stop loss needs to be not where I would lose $50 and don't want to trade anymore because my account's taking too much of a hit. Not where I run out of margin and my position's closed because the broker's cut my margin. Uh, I was risking too much percentage of my account. Not where, uh, you know, you think a certain pip amount you want to lose per trade is. No, you need to set your stop loss where your analysis is wrong. Okay, so if you think you're setting this trade based, uh, let me, let me, the easiest way to show you guys this is by diving into an example. Okay, so let's say we're trading this euro dollar. Price is in an uptrend like we see here, right? We've got price here setting higher highs, higher lows, right? We've got structure being made. Now, price comes down, sets this higher low which is retesting this higher low, right? So we've got structure in here, broken and retested. Now, if I'm trading this long, price comes down here, finds support, right? We got a spinning top candle, indecision candle. We found support in this zone. What I want to do is I want to set a stop loss that's going to say to me, okay, if price goes to here, wherever here is, my analysis of being long on this trade is invalid. So if I think I want to be long on this trade, as long as market structure holds, this low holds, bounces, 
As long as price trades above this zone, I want to be long, then that's easy. I want to set my stop loss below the zone, right? This is the zone where, okay, if this price now, we're at this point, right? Right here is where we are when we're deciding on this trade. None of this has happened yet. I don't want to scroll the chart over so it looks horrible. None of that has happened yet. This is where we are right now. Price at this support, right? I want to determine if I want to go long here, where would I be wrong in assuming this is a long position? What would price have to do for me to think I'm wrong? Now, based off this price action, based off this, you could even, oops, forgot what tool I was using there. You can even throw a trend line in here. Based off this, this analysis, my trade would be invalid if price comes down and sets a new lower low and breaks this uptrend. It would be invalidating this trend line, it would be invalidating this support line, and it would be breaking market structure. So I want to get out when this comes down and sets a new low, right? That is when I know I'm calling mercy because my long trade is not valid. So that's where we set our stop loss. If I'm trading, let's say I'm trading reversals. I see price came up here, failed to break above resistance. Here, failed to break above resistance. I want to go short now. Where would my trade be invalid short in this area? Where would price have to go for my trade to be invalid? I would put my stops up above this, up above the highs that price made here. Because if, if after this, I want to be a double top and fail to break resistance here. If price pulls back a little and then does this, well, looks like this is not a reversal. Trend's continuing, and that's just moving up to the upside and breaking out of this resistance, right? So that would be where my analysis is wrong. Now, you can apply this stop loss analysis being wrong to a number of different factors of trading, right? So again, you guys, we need very structured trading plans. We need to follow a very disciplined approach. We need to um, essentially have a strict plan in place. And with that strict plan, we have rules that we follow. We have confirmations that get triggered. And when we set this stop loss, we want it to be where our um, triggers that got us into the trade are invalidated. So let's say you trade Fibonacci trend lines, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, um, and you're entering on a bounce of the trend line. Well, maybe then you invalidate your trade and your analysis is wrong when that trend line is broken. If I'm trading a pullback to this trend line, and I want to take it long, and this trend line bounce with a bullish engulfing pattern right here is what I need to trigger my trade, I would put my stop loss below the bullish engulfing pattern below this trend line. So if price breaks this pattern and the trend line, my analysis is wrong. I'm not tapping out because I've run out of money in my account. I'm not tapping out because I uh, have to go to bed. I'm not tapping out because of anything other than my analysis is wrong, okay? So if your analysis is wrong, good. Move on, find another trade, you're out. You lost, that's normal, that's part of trading, that's how it works. But if you're gonna be setting stop losses not based off your analysis being wrong, if you're gonna be setting stop losses based off of what Jimmy told you or what uh, you know, a number of different other things that people use, the most common one that I see, which is the worst thing you could ever do, is setting your stop loss based off of how much money you're willing to risk. The reason that couldn't be further from being wrong is risk management in Forex should always be determined with a position size calculator. Now, I'll go over this at a different point in time. My students know what I'm talking about, have the lesson. A position size calculator, you use the pair you're trading, the size of your account, the percentage risk you're taking, and the size stop loss in PIP value to determine your position size. So what that's doing is you're already predetermining where your stop loss is going to be. You're predetermining um, how many pips away from entry your stop's going to be based off of where your analysis would be wrong. 
you know how big your account is and you know how much percent of your account you're willing to risk per trade. Extremely essential in trading um, risk management and, and longevity in trading. So uh, if you determine all these, then your risk is different with every trade because your stop loss is different. Your pair you're trading is different, but your percentage of risk of capital in your account stays consistent. And that is what's most important. So you want to develop a system where you set a stop loss based off your analysis. You determine your stop loss, each pay, each trade. Then you go and input your stop loss in pip size into the position size calculator to then determine whether you risk a half a lot, uh, 10 micro lots, whatever it may be. That is how you determine how much you're going to risk. That is how you determine um, where you're going to set your stop based off of your analysis to then translate into how big of a position you're going to make. So stop setting your stop losses where your account is going to be at mercy. Stop setting your stop losses where anything other than you are wrong with that trade in particular. If you follow a trading plan, each trade should be pretty identical because your exact setup has to be perfect for you to execute that trade. So your trade needs to be pretty identical in order for you to execute that trade. Now, each trade should be pretty similar. So your rules and your stop losses should look very similar every trade you make. Once you have that similar, yes, people say good trading can be boring. I think trading is always exciting. But when you have a strict plan, you have a strict uh, rule set to follow, yeah, it takes a lot of the thinking and, and craziness out of it, but that's where all the errors come in. It takes all the errors out of it. So when determining your stop losses, we want to take as many errors out and want to be consistent, and we want them to be set in places where the market tells us we're wrong. And there are, like I said, a number of ways you can do that. You can set your stop loss based off a moving average. If you trade uh, pullbacks, you can have, uh, let's say you trade this pullback right here. You could say the 50 SMA is your stop loss, whatever, right? You could have a Fibonacci retracement point be your stop loss. So for example, let's say I am trading this pullback right here. Right, so let's say I'm trading this pullback right here. Price comes up, sets a new high, pulls back to set a higher low, right? So if I use Fibonacci in my trading plan, I could use, okay, the 618 is my last line of defense for a pullback trend continuation trade. So this pullback would be a reversal and invalid to me, hypothetically speaking, if it broke the 618. So I'll put my stop right below the 618. That's where my trade would be invalid, right? So what did price do? It held on the 50 SMA, never went down to break the 618, and we went up to set a new higher high, right? So your stop loss could be based off of Fibonacci. Your stop loss could be based off of market structure, right? My favorite is basing it off of support resistance, which is also like market structure. So let's say, Price made a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Let's say you were trading a pullback on this pullback. You could look left, find the prior structure, right? So this is where the prior higher high was. Pulled back, set a higher high, higher low, higher high, pulled back to the prior structure. Now you could say if it breaks this prior structure and comes below, my trade's invalid. What I was looking for is wrong. Uh, move on to the next opportunity because that opportunity is gone. Okay, so you could put your stop loss down here below where that prior structure was and that's where your trading is wrong. That's where your analysis is wrong. That's where you're going to throw in the towel, move on to the next trade, accept the loss because that's part of the game, take it on to the next part, right? So um, determining a stop loss is very simple but very overlooked and can be Typical concept for people to grasp at first. So just ensure that you are setting your stop losses 
in areas where your analysis is declared to be wrong. Everybody has different styles. Everybody has different triggers that they trade off of. But just ensure that your stop loss is set where your analysis is wrong. If I'm trading on the hourly time frame and I'm trading pullbacks, I don't want to set my stop loss based off of the 15-minute chart or the daily chart. If I'm trading an hourly chart, if I set my stop loss based off the daily, then crap, it could take me a long time. My target's going to have to be far. If, if the trade's worth taking, my target should be two times the size of my risk, my stop loss. So if I'm setting a stop loss based off the daily and I'm trading the hourly, it's going to take me multiple days to hit my target. And I'm trading on the hourly. So why would I want to be waiting multiple days to, to hit my take profit if I'm trading the hourly time frame? You guys see what I'm saying? It's just, it, it, it doesn't make sense. You need the same trading time frame you're on to be the same time frame that you set your stops and your targets because that is where you are going to have the realistic target. You're going to be able to determine where your stop loss is wrong. Um, that's where you can keep results consistent. And the other thing with stop losses is you need to be able to um, track how they perform. So if you set your stop loss based off of support and resistance every time, if you're not journaling and tracking your stops over time, you have no way of knowing, oh, this strategy I would win 80% of my trades instead of 40% of my trades if only I used a wider stop loss. You know, my stop loss gets taken out all the time and then the trade goes in my direction. So if you're not journaling where you're placing these stop losses and being consistent with how you place them, you'll have no way of knowing how to fix it, how to improve your trading and how to get better with placing your stop losses. A stop loss can be the reason your trading strategy is not working. If your stop loss is too wide, maybe, uh, you know, you could be hitting targets faster because you could have a closer target. If your stop loss is too tight, maybe you're getting stopped off on normal volatility, just normal chop in price and the clear, strong, clean moves in the market, you're totally missing. But if your analysis is accurate, your stop loss is just too tight. So you have to work on your stop losses. You have to track them. You have to journal them. You have to stay consistent with how you set them and how you follow them. That is the only way you're going to be able to take trading to the next level. So with targets, targets are a little bit um, less important. They are extremely important, but they're not as critical as your stop loss. Um, but it is just as critical to follow them, have a set style of determining them and following them consistently so you can track how your take profits are. My rule of thumb, which should be most traders rule of thumb, in my opinion, is that my target should be a minimum of two times the size of my risk of my stop loss. So if I have a 30 pip stop loss, I'm only taking that trade if I have an achievable target of 60 pips or more, right? So what that means is it's a realistic target. It's achievable. It's something you could see price doing without much struggle, okay? And again, there's a number of different ways to set, take profits. You can use market structure, support and resistance, trend lines, Fibonacci, extensions, moving averages, crossovers, uh, divergence, a number of different things. But... All in all, our targets need to be realistic, they need to be achievable, and they need to make sense. I love using structure to determine targets, right? So a lot of you guys that watch my pullback trading know if this is an uptrend that I'm trading, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. If I'm trading this pullback right here, if I'm getting in down here at a good price, my first target is going to be look left. The last higher high we made that's going to be my first target. So I think price is likely to be able to get back up to that range. Whether it breaks it and sets a new high, that's a tougher situation. That's something that is going to take a little bit more push from price. And, um, you know, maybe I don't want to... Oh, shit. Maybe I don't want to necessarily look for that um, drastic of a price move. Maybe I want to just look for price to... Um, retest that high just like I showed you guys there so you want your targets to be realistic you want your targets to be achievable you want your targets to be in line with your stop loss if again if you're setting your stop loss and your entry on the hourly time frame you need to set your target on the hourly time frame it makes zero sense to set a target based off another time frame zero sense now maybe you trade the hourly but you're um, trading it 
you know, right around the daily level that you want to be your target, okay, break it down to the hourly, find where the best point in that daily zone is that you think you're going to hit. That's where you set your target. You want your target to be realistic. You want it to be achievable. You want it to make sense. You want it to be bigger than your stop, right? So that is how we are going to approach our targets. We want to ensure that we have a target that makes sense, guys. I can't emphasize that enough. I see too many times charts with trades that look like this. Uh, sorry, I always do this. Sam trading a pullback. I see all the time charts that look like this. Oh, I'm gonna set a uh, 54 pip stop loss and I'm gonna set that as my target. There's my trade. Is, is that serious? Now, maybe you win one out of 10 trades and the one that wins out of 10 is this big so it makes up for all the nine losers. But realistically, this doesn't make sense, right? We need to be realistic. Now, this could make sense. Three to one risk to reward. You got a decently tight stop, but it's below support, below structure. There's targets up here, prior high. Boom. That's, that's achievable. Entering a pullback here, having that tight of a stop loss and being like, oh, I'm going to get to the uh, monthly zone up here. That's not, that's not a realistic target. You need a target that is achievable in a reasonable amount of time. If you're trading the hourly time frame, you want that target to be an amount of pips that looks like it's achievable in a normal three, four hour move on the chart. I don't want to be trading something that's uh, 200 pips away on an hourly time frame when the average daily pip range for that pair is uh, 40 pips because that's going to take me three days to hit that target. I'm not trading the hourly time frame to wait three days for a target to be hit, right? Maybe the rare occasion that'll happen. You get a range bound move, you get a lot of consolidation, whatever. But the typical situation, you want your time frames to agree. You want your trades to all be placed, the actual management, target, stop, entry, all to be placed in the same time frame so that it makes sense. You can identify easily where you want price to be and that there's an achievable time period in price hitting that area. All right. So that should cover it up here, guys. Um, going to go hop into the webinar here, take some questions and all that should cover though, the, uh, setting targets and stop losses. I hope that clears some of the air for you guys, gives you a little bit more direction. Uh, go ahead and check out corefxtrading.com If you want to learn more about the exact ways I set my stops and targets, I share my exact trading plan, exactly how I go ahead and determine them, and uh, a little bit more in depth. But this should be a great guide for you guys on how to find your targets, how to set stop losses properly, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the video.